Turning now to the migration to ISO 2022 for electronic data. Banks are being told they need to look beyond the new migration and think about how to leverage the regulatory change. It's being suggested that the industry must work to take advantage of their investment in order to create business opportunities and build value for clients. Well, I'm delighted to say that we're joined now by Rosanna Thomas. She's head of enterprise payments platform EMEA at Fiserv. To look at this in more detail, it's very good to see you. Are you enjoying Cybos? I am greatly enjoying Cybos. It is wonderful to be back out in in the the conference with seeing all of our clients, our um, our partners, and just hearing about all the wonderful things that are going on in the industry and how we can leverage that. And, you know, the theme is listen, learn, and leverage. I've been hearing that this morning quite a bit, and I really think this is a great opportunity to do that. We have. Uh, speaking with our clients, listening to some of the needs that they have, how we take that information back and, and leverage it going forward. Well, we're delighted to have you here on Cybus TV, Rosanna. Can I start by asking ISO 2022, is it the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? It is the end of the beginning. We are just starting this, uh, this journey, right? The, the, with November coming up, we'll have a, the first phase of the high value ISO conversions and that will be with um, uh, Target 2 and Euro 1 and the first phase of SWIFT and then we go into uh, the UK with CHAPS and then CHIPS follows in November and then we move into Fedwire and we also have links in, in, uh, in this November as well with Canada. So it is the beginning um, and we have a, a still a long way to go. You know, we won't be able to achieve all the benefits until we get all of the high value systems on the, the ISO format. In other words, you've got a pack diary. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we're planning now for, uh, for conversion weekend because that is significant. As I said, we have Target 2, Euro 1, Swift, and then we have Lynx as well. So there's a lot, a lot of planning into that conversion weekend because there's a, a lot riding on everything going smoothly. I mean, jokes aside, look, what, what we're talking about here is a period of staggered implementations, and that's going to throw up all sorts of challenges mm -hmm. for the banks and indeed for the other actors involved. What are those challenges? How much time have you got? <laughs> oh, there, there is a lot of challenge. It has been interesting just preparing for this. Because when we look at the ISO conversion, you're thinking it's an, a format change. You say, okay, so this will be, 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 you know, there'll be more information, richer information, it'll be wonderful. But it's not just changing the clearing and settlement mechanisms format, it is also then having the banks have to change all of their integration points. They have to feed all their downstream systems with this information. A lot of those are legacy systems, mainframe environments, you know, 40-year-old systems that are not capable of handling all this information. So there's been an adjustment period, and there's a lot of middleware, a lot of mapping, and um, just figuring out how they're going to be translating this information in the short term so that they can feed the systems and be able to then provide the value to their customers. So it is definitely the, the end of the first phase, but the beginning of, of the future of ISO and, and how we need to adapt for that. Are you seeing a big difference at the moment between the banks viewing this regulatory change as just a mandatory change as opposed to an opportunity? So I, see, I think it's a 50-50 split. So you have some banks that have really embraced this as an opportunity to say, this is a change, we're moving to ISO, we need to adapt our systems, so let's start building our platform so that they can you know, evolve with, with the markets, with the regions that are going, but also evolve their internal systems so that they can take more data-rich information in from their clients and then provide more data-rich information back out to the clients. So that's, that to me is the best model because you're looking at the opportunity end-to-end -end and you're leveraging and you're monetizing an investment because compliance is uh, one of the things everybody has to do but if you can leverage that and monetize it then you come out a bit stronger then you have some of the other banks that are like I have to do this I got to focus on what I need to do so we're going to focus on this first just get the compliance you know done and ready for what we need to do for November uh, for April or then you know for the following uh, um, releases that are happening and then afterwards it'll be like how do we how do we evolve um, but it'll take a little bit longer then for them to get to the full benefit of, of what the ISO will bring. I mean, look, it, it is very challenging, but what we're talking about here is a new payments model emerging. It's a big conversation point, all of these components coming together. Yes, there will be difficulties along the way, mm -hmm. nothing is ever easy, but at the same time, there will be incredible opportunities. 
What are those opportunities? How will they manifest themselves? Uh, absolutely. The beauty of the ISO format is it provides more data. So there's more data, it'll be richer data, and it'll be structured data. So this gives an opportunity for, for banks to provide that, that data-rich information to their clients. So there's better decisions that can be made by the bank from an operational perspective, how they provide you know, products to their customers, how they can use that data and embed themselves more, not just in the payment piece of it, but in the whole payment flow from a, for a client's perspective. Embed the payment opportunity in the invoice so that you can carry that all the way through. And that really is gonna provide value because that information can flow through the whole uh, payment chain. So where do you think the banks should be turning their attention to at the moment when thinking about leveraging their investments? So they really need to look at what, their, what uh, verticals their clients are in, where, where the, the space that they're playing in, and, and what the, some of the pain points that the clients have so that they can leverage that and, and really benefit the, help benefit the client's needs throughout the whole chain. So the data will be there, but what does the data mean? So you have to really be able to understand it. Data's been in payments for a long time, but how you capture it, how it flows through, what the value is of that payment. You have to look at that by, for each of your customers and the market segments that those customers play in. But what about the payments fragmentation? Because the goal is obviously to have a system which is seamless, that the banks can do it all. Can they really do that? Or can you actually have shared responsibility within the one structure? The bank's at the heart of it. We were actually having this kind of debate yesterday at, at our booth, and we're talking about there's just so much going on. I mean, even as a consumer, you look at all the options that you have to pay individuals. Banks are going through those same discussions of all these different partners, all the different systems. Where, where do you play? Yeah, who right? takes responsibility for which part mm -hmm. of the chain, basically? Right, and, and you can spread yourself out and try to play in every... In, in every um, a system that's there, but it really is not going to be, you're not going to be able to monetize that very well, right? Because if you don't have enough, um, enough volumes in the, the different areas, you're just not leveraging. So it really has to be to look at, again, where are your customers? What's the strategy of the bank? Where do you feel that you can bring the most value into that market segment and then and with what partners that you want to be able to do that with. So it's not they're just, just their technology partners, but fintech partners, overlay services that are there. There's so much opportunity, but you can't do it all. And I do think that if you try to do that, you're just spreading yourself out too thin. And it may be good to play in a couple to see where you're gonna get the best, um, best opportunities, but you really do need to look within, look at your customers, look at where you want to go, and make those decisions based on your strategy, because that's where you're going to get the biggest opportunity and, and leverage the investment. Because it's all, you know, it's leveraging the investment, the return that's there, and, and being able to monetize this compliance. It's a huge cost to financial institutions. So how do you monetize it and how to provide value at the end of the day? You talk about costs. What sort of solutions are the banks looking for at the moment? And where, where should they be looking, perhaps? So with Depends again, as we said, some of the, the banks are looking at using the compliance to leverage and really be able to you know, advance their, uh, their technology. So looking at the solution should be, if you're looking at doing that, you really want to get a technology that is going to be what I call future-proof, something that's going to help move you into the next generation, things that include microservices, APIs, so that you can really advance, and because they have legacy systems. I mean, that's been part of the problem for a number is how do you communicate with these legacy formats. We also know that, that banks are looking at how to leverage the cloud more efficiently so that they can provide um, you know, more access, have security operating in different regions, having that data secured in those regions, but still being able to leverage the cloud. So there is opportunities, and, and what we're hearing is that financial institutions are looking at technology, looking at the next generation technology and making sure that it will grow and it will evolve with them. And I think that that's, that's important for them to, um, to evaluate. You know, it's tough, but someone's got to do it, which is why you're there <laughs> describing it. You're there doing it and you're going to succeed. <laughs> yes, uh, and the banks are going to succeed. We're working very closely with our financial institution partners. It's been a two-year, a uh, little over two-year journey now with the Target 2 year one and starting with, the, with SWIFT. And it, it really has been a partnership 
we've, uh, you know, we feel that we're not just providing them a software solution, but we are also there to provide our expertise and consult with them and, and help them through this journey. And we've learned a lot from just what we've done here in, in, uh, in Europe. And now it's time to move and, uh, and, and follow the sun and, and help our financial institutions in North America as well. Well, we're going to be following you all the way to <laughs> Toronto, I think, next year for Cyprus. Yes. But Rosanna, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Rosanna Thomas, head of enterprise payments platform EMEA at FISERV. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of Cyprus. Thank Cyborg. you very much. Thank you.